we can configure injectors in Angular by using the providers property on an ng module, or we can use the providers property on either a component or a directive, or we can use the view providers property on components. So the question is, where do you configure your provider? And understanding where to configure your provider is a key piece of understanding how to architect your Angular application. And that's what we're going to discuss in this lecture with a real practical example. By the end of this lecture, you're going to know the difference between configuring a provider on an NG module, a component or directives providers property, and a component view providers property. So to demonstrate this functionality, I've created a simple class called simple service. And simple service has one property called value, which holds a string. I also have a component called child component. And I've injected an instance of simple service into our components constructor. And then in the template, I'm using string interpolation to bind to the value of value on our simple service. And I also have another component called parent component. And again, I'm injecting an instance of simple service. But this time, I have an input control and I'm binding, I'm doing two way data binding using ng model on the service dot value. And I'm also rendering an instance of the child component from within our parent component. And then in the app component in our top level app component, I'm just rendering two parent components side by side. Now these classes here, this row and col xs6, these are just Twitter bootstrap classes, which lets me show two things side by side. So they'll show up side by side instead of one on top of the other. And just another quick note, these components also have some styling set up on it. I'm not going to go through it, but they're just to add some nice uh, different background colors so we can clearly distinguish between the parent and the child components. Now, before I can run this, we first need to configure our simple service on the root ng module. That's the first example we're going to look at, which is configuring the simple service via the ng module providers. So if I go into the ng module and just like before, I'm going to add it via providers. Here. And in this configuration, the service has been injected into our application's root ng module and, and is therefore available in our root top level injector. Let's have a look to see what happens when we run this. So there we go. We now have two components being showed up uh, side by side. The yellow is the parent component and the blue is the child component. So if I type into parent component, we can see the same text being rendered in the child component and in also the sibling child component and in the sibling parent component. And if I type into the other parent component, we can see the same thing happening. It's the, it's the same value that's getting rendered in all of the different components. Let me explain what's going on with an animation. So we have the injector tree in the middle of the screen, the component tree to the right of the screen, and I'm just showing which providers are getting configured where on the left of the screen. So right now, the simple service is getting provided on the root ng module. Therefore, we only have one injector, one global injector, which is resolving the dependency. So therefore, every time we request an instance of simple service to be injected into one of our components, it's always going to inject the same instance. So if the parent component requests an instance of simple service, it will forward it to its injector, 
but since its injector doesn't, we haven't configured it on the parent component, it's going to forward the request to its parent, which is the ng module injector. And since we've configured it there, it's going to return an instance of simple service. And then when the child component requests the token simple service, it goes to its child injector. We haven't configured it on the child injector, so that will forward it to its parent. It's not configured on the parent, and that's going to forward it to ng module. And then ng module will return to it the exactly the same instance of simple service that was returned to the parent component. So both of those components, the parent and the child, are getting returned exactly the same instance of simple service. Remember, if we request the same token from the same injector, we get the same instance returned. And since we've bound the input field on our parent component directly to the simple service value field, and since it's the same instance of simple service being returned everywhere, that's why whenever I type into the input field, it's automatically updating the other input controls and also the child components as well. So therefore, if you want to share one instance of a service across the entirety of your application, you can figure it on the ng module providers. Now let's see what will happen when we configure the simple service additionally on the parent component via the providers property. So it's still configured on the ng module, but I'm also going to configure it on the parent component decorator on its providers property. Now, if I rerun the application, let's see what's going on. So we're still rendering our components as before, but if I type into the parent component, we can see that typing into one parent component will update that parent component and its child, and typing into the other parent component will only update its child. So both of these components seem to be, well, seem to be separate now. They don't seem to be sharing anything. Let me explain what's going on with another animation. So if we look at our injector tree and the providers, we can see that we're providing, we've configured the ng module injector with the simple service. But in addition, we've also configured the injector associated with the parent component with the simple service as well. So now each instance of parent component has its own injector. Different instances, different parent components will have their own injector and each of those injectors will have its own simple service configured on it. So now when a parent component requests a resolution of the simple service token, it will request this from its injector. And since we've configured simple service on the parent component as well, the parent components injector will just return an instance of simple service. It won't get forwarded to the ng module. And then when the child component, the child of the parent, when it requests simple service as well, we haven't configured it on the child component, so it's gonna forward the request to its parent, it's configured on the parent, and it will return the same instance of simple service that was configured on its parent. And that's why both the parent and the child are sharing as an instance of simple service, like so. So the parent and child are both sharing an instance of simple service. So that's why entering data into the parent will update the child. But both parent components now have separate instances of simple service. And that's why each parent component isn't sharing data uh, between themselves. That's why they have separate data. They have separate instances of simple service. So if we want to have one instance of a service per component and shared with all of the component's children, we configure that service on the provider's property on our component decorator. Okay, so if we now configure the simple service provider on the view provider's property on the parent component, let's see what happens. So I'm, all I've done is I've changed the property name to view 
providers. And now if I rerun the application, we can see that nothing really has changed. It's still the same functionality as if we had configured it on the providers property. But let's use content projection and the ng content tag to change the child component from being a view child of parent to being a content child of parent. So instead of just inserting child, I'm going to project the child in via an ng content tag. And then in the app component, I just add some content children in between the opening and closing parent tags. So this will essentially render the same result. We will still have some child components being rendered under the parent component but they will now be content children instead of direct view children. So if I rerun the application, we can see that at least visually it looks the same. But if we now type into parent components, we can see that this isn't actually automatically updating the child components anymore. That's because when using view providers, the component creates an injector which is only used by the current component and any view children of the current component. If you are a content child, as our child component now is, then it uses the injector in ng module to resolve the dependency. Let me show you with an animation. So similar to before, we've provided simple service on ng module and we've provided simple service on the parent injector, but via the view providers property. And now when a parent component requests a resolution of the simple service token, it goes to its parent injector. And since it's configured on the parent injector, that's fine, it will return an instance of simple service. But then when the child requests an instance requested resolution of the simple service, token, since the child is a content child, it can't then request, it doesn't then forward the request to the parent injector. It requests actually directly from the ng module itself. So now the parent component, each parent component is getting returned a separate instance of simple service. And then all child components are actually getting returned the same instance of simple service from ng module but most notably, it's a different instance to the parent component. So, and since we're changing the value of the uh, simple service from the parent component, the child component isn't updating automatically. Nothing is updating the simple service that gets uh, injected into the child component. And since nothing is changing the simple service that's getting in injected into child component, that's why we're not showing anything on, uh, on the screen when we type into the parent component. So if we only want to have one instance of a service per component and shared with only the component's view children and not the component's content children, we then configure that provider on the view providers property on our component decorator. So to summarize, we can configure the DI framework in Angular in three main ways. We can configure a provider on the ng module on a component or directives providers property and on a components view providers property. And deciding where to configure your provider and understanding the difference is key in understanding how to architect an Angular application. If we want an instance of a dependency to be shared globally and share stay across the application, we configure it on the ng module. But if we want a separate instance of a dependency, to be shared across each instance of a component and its children, we configure it on the component's providers property. And if we want a separate instance of a dependency to be shared across each instance of a component and only its view children, 
we configure it on the components view providers property.